Well, if you have a benefits plan, do you know what's included in it and what isn't? The founder of Kotak Personal Injury Law, Nanish Kotak, joins us now to take a look. And this is a good reminder if you are fortunate enough to have a benefits package to really, really read that fine print because there are all kinds of roadblocks that could be put in there. Absolutely, Annette. So essentially there's two types of disability policies that are, that are available. One is a group policy and it's usually from an employer and the other is a private policy that you would purchase personally. The group policies tend to be, uh, the applications tend to be denied more um, and they also have provisions that change the definition of disability. Usually for the first two years you'll have to establish that you're unable to perform the essential tasks of your own occupation. After two years it's whether or not you could perform any gainful occupation that you're suited by way of education, training or experience. So that's one thing to look for in a policy is how is disability defined? The other thing is look at our inflation right now. We're at six and a half, seven percent, maybe mm -hmm. more. So having a cost of living allowance in a disability policy will provide you that peace of mind. So if, you're on, if you are disabled and you're being paid, it will increase over time. The private policies, the advantage of that, if, if someone is a bit younger, um, they tend to be uh, not as expensive as you would, you would imagine. Somebody my age is going to be a lot more, obviously. But there you can tailor the plan to yourself. For example, you can have an own occupation policy so that it doesn't matter if you can do something else. If you can't do your own occupation, you're supposed to be paid. You can have it, obviously you're paying, so it would be non-taxable in terms of the benefits that you get. And you can have that cost of living allowance. Another thing to look at is you want to make sure that the percentage of income you receive from a disability policy is anywhere between 60 to 80 percent. You don't want less, you want to try to avoid if there's caps because really you're not going to be getting uh, your money's worth. You're, you're only going to be getting a small amount of benefits which may not be enough. Now are these benefits, are they often paid out in one lump sum or are they, would you receive them as you would receive a paycheck? Right, so if somebody is accepted on claim, that would be as you receive a paycheck. There's often an elimination period of 30 days or so where you don't get paid, um, but you'll be paid on a monthly basis. Where lump sum uh, settlements come into play really is if a claim is denied and there is that opportunity then uh, in, a, in a litigation to negotiate payments well into the future by way of a lump sum payment so you have more control over the money. And what happens in a case where maybe the disability is as a result of a workplace accident? Right. What, what happens then? Right, so uh, the first payer, it really depends if there's WSIB coverage. Okay. Right, because if there's WSIB coverage and it's accepted as occurring from uh, the workplace, because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, back complaints could be from home as well, and they, yes. might, they yep. might deny it. The first payer should be WSIB. Uh, unfortunately, they tend to deny a lot of claims. Mm -hmm. So, so then that the next recourse is through the disability policy that the employer um, has provided. Okay, and and then what about uh, we're hearing so much more about like mental stress yes. and 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 you know can that kind of disable you? And, and, and even the word dis disability, are, are we not going to be using that word anymore? <laughs> well, you know, the fact is though, it, it is disabling. You know, the most of our claims that we receive through our office mm -hmm. involve uh, some sort of mental illness, usually anxiety and okay. depression, maybe post-traumatic stress disorder. They tend to be more readily denied because these are invisible, so to speak, illnesses. You can't really measure them with an MRI or a scan. Um, but the, you know, cases where we are able to get large settlements for people often involve um, a mental illness because they, 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 they can establish that they can't even do a sedentary type okay. of employment. Okay. It's a good reason if you're fortunate enough to have benefits, take a good look at them today. Nanish, thank you very much for coming in. Great to have you back in and in person. <laughs> Great to be back. Thank you so much.